Hello everybody, and on this Elevator Parts video, we're going to be taking a look and wiring Otis Lexan. Let's go ahead and get started. So if you've ever seen an older Otis elevator, you've probably seen this button before. It's a very simple button, just as a black button with a little white arrow in the middle and a kind of clear ring around the side. If we turn it to the side, you can see there's not really a whole lot to this. We've got this metal bracket, which holds this little base on, and it's held on with these two little nuts. And if you notice when I press the button in, it simply pushes down on the contact. So to take this thing apart, it's pretty simple. Just disconnect the bracket and pull it off. And here we have a closer look at the actual contact portion. And in this case, we just have a single terminal button, but these just pull off just like that. There's a the little clip. You got some Velcro on here, which we'll be using later when it comes to wiring, but that's the bracket. And you also notice there are spaces for more buttons contacts. So you could theoretically have three contacts or however many you needed. Here we have the actual contact itself. So we've got this little button here and when you push down on it, it completes the circuit. There's a normally closed switch and a normally open switch. There's also a lamp socket on the side. We've got these little wires that go to it. I've kind of got them in a uh, position already. And this little lamp socket takes these PSB bulbs. So if you want to get bulbs for an Otis Lexan, in my case, we're gonna run it on six volts. So this is a six PSB bulb. And it slides in just like that. So first we'll take a closer look at the actual button portion. So without the contact in there, you simply press it in and it stays down and it actually looks like a touch button, but obviously it's not because it moves. If you turn it over, so this is the clear part where the light is and there's this little space here for the light. And if you've ever paid attention to these buttons, you'll notice that it's lit up from one side and that's because there's a light bulb that sits just like this. Now in order to take this thing out, you'll notice there is this little clip and you have to pull that off just like that. And when you do that, you can take the button out. Here's what the actual button looks like. It's actually pretty simple. It's just this little metal rod. And this is what pushes down onto the contact. Now to take the rest of the button out, you'll notice there is this plastic piece down here. And this is what's actually holding the entire button in place, is this little plastic piece. And there's these four little pins that you have to push in all at the same time. So you push all four of them in at the same time and you just kind of pull the plastic piece out like that. The little ring comes out as well, and then the back comes right off, revealing all of the parts of the button. And while I had all the pieces apart, I decided to go ahead and clean this thing up. It wasn't in bad shape by any means, but it just cleaned up the little ring a little bit, kind of wiped off the button cap, and gave the plate a nice shine. So let's go ahead and put this button all back together. And there we have the button put back together, and it looks very nice. So now let's take a look at how to wire one of these. Now believe it or not, this is actually a very simple wiring. All you need is the actual switch, your light bulb. In my case, we have a six PSB bulb and a power supply. In my case, a nine volt battery. So in this case, wiring this is just like a single switch circuit. So we'll have one switch that powers a light. And the way we're gonna do that is pretty simple. So these bottom two connectors are for the normally open switch. So what we'll do is we'll use one side for one side of the battery. In this case, we could use positive or negative. Then we'll connect one of the wires from the lamp socket to the opposite side. In this case, these are conveniently labeled four and three. So three will have our wire and we'll go to the bulb. And then this wire would go to the other end of your battery. And for convenience sake, since we're not using this top switch, so we're not actually using the normally closed switch, we can use this as a nice little terminal to connect stuff to. So all we have to do is connect our battery pack to these two terminals. Now obviously this is going to change if you have, let's say, an intermediate station. And the way you would wire that is you would simply wire the other button exactly the same. And all you would have to do is take a wire from both the positive and the negative, bring the positive over to the positive of the other switch and the negative to the negative of the other switch. So let's go ahead and wire this thing up and see how it works. All right, so here's the completed circuit. Very simple, we've got our bulb in here our little nine volt battery on the side. So let's clip this on here. And after hooking up our battery, let's give it a test. There we go, so it lights up. Very simple circuit and very easy to make. And now I've stuck my nine volt battery onto the piece of Velcro, and all it's left to do is put the cover back on. And now that the button's back together, look at that. It works and it looks very nice. And turning the bright light off, we can see it even better. So I hope you enjoyed this short little wiring tutorial and detailed look of an Otis Lexan call button. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.